Okay, today is Thursday, September 15, 2011. We're doing lesson 1.1 from your textbooks, Characteristics of a Function. Okay, a function can be described in many different ways. Your book right now has, we'll say, I think your first example deals with an oval shape. Okay? Two, three, we have numbers four, five, and seven, let's say. When you get a description like this, what they're trying to give you are actual coordinates. So the very first one where an arrow is pointing from, this would represent our x and this would represent our y. What this is actually giving you is the coordinate of 1 and 4. So I'm going to rewrite it down here. The very first coordinate on this graph is 1, 4. So I can plot that point. Let's assume this is all through 1s. Okay, so we have our graph. The very first set of numbers here represents the coordinate 1, 4. And remember, when we go to plot these things, the x-coordinate is always first, and the second one is our y. So I look for 1 on the x-axis and 4. So this is one of the points. The next point they're showing us is 2, 5. So a second point on this function here is 2 and the number 5. And finally, the third one they've given us is 3 and 7. So we look on x is 3, y is 7. Now, these represent specific points. I'm not connecting this. This isn't a continuous line at all. These are all just points. What's important, we have to realize what a function is. A function, when graphed, is anything I can draw a straight line up and down through, and it only touches the points once. So, what I'm trying to say is if I have a straight line going up and down, it's supposed to touch the other. Right. This only touches one point when I draw a vertical line. Same with this here. Only touches one point. And finally, this only touches one point. This is called the vertical line test. Okay? So when you draw a line through several points or even a continuous function, if it only touches it once, then it is a function. And I'm going to get a little clearer as we go on. So this is the vertical line test. So you want to draw into the graph? Sure. Draw whatever you like. Vertical line test. OK. All right. So an example of that, you guys would have been dealing with two different types of functions last year. Uh, one of the functions you had dealt with is y equals mx plus b, which is a straight line. And another function you had dealt with is y equals x squared, quadratic function. So we're not going to go over drawing them yet, a parabola. I'm just going to give you two examples right now. First example is this could be a y equals mx plus b. Okay? This is a straight line. It could go many different ways. But according to our vertical line test, it is or isn't a function. It is. It is. No matter where I draw a vertical line, it only touches this once. So that means this is a function. You know what? Let's get rid of the other one. So that was dealing with a linear line. We know that a properly drawn linear line is a function. Okay? So is a function. Let's draw a parabola quickly. If I use the vertical line test, it has to be a straight line. Does this pass the vertical line test? It doesn't? Yeah, it does. Where doesn't it? It does. It does. It, it does. does. No, because he didn't draw it straight. It doesn't come back around. It'll, continue. It'll get flatter and flatter, but a vertical line straight up and down will always only touch this once. Okay? So this is a function. We'll get into those points after. Yeah. So what's an example of this? It's not a circle. We'll do a couple. A circle is an example. 
Okay. So, this is also a function. All right, so we've just discovered two things that are functions. We know a straight line is a function. We know a quadratic is a function. Now, there's many other ways we can write things. We showed you in the first example, your book represents it with ovals. I'm not sure why they chose to represent it that way. This is our inputs and our outputs, they call it. So when I input, let's say we have the numbers 2 and 4, and we have 1, 2, and 3. So they'll use arrows, and what these are saying is our first one is we have a coordinate of x, 2, y, 1. So I'll write that below. That's going to be one of our coordinates. Sorry. Why do you draw those? x, 2, y, 1. This is a coordinate. So this is a point on the graph. So if we go to, oh, i got to number that again. So the very first one, this represents 2 and 1. So I've written out that point. Okay, so we've got our first point. It's at 2 and 1. So I go and plot it. It's just the point. There's no continuous line or anything. They're only representing one point. Now the way these arrows are set up, it's also telling me that there is another point at x2 and y2. So extend the page a little. Another point is 2 and 2. Okay? They've represented it by just putting in one x and giving two y values. So another point is 2 and 2. So here's another point. And finally, the third point is at x4, y3. So we're at 4 and 3. Now if we do the vertical line test here, how many times do I touch points in this so-called function? Three. Do I ever draw a vertical line and touch it twice? Yes. Yes. So is this a function? No. no. So these points together, they do not represent a function because there is a point so above another. Point, so I didn't get that one. <laughs> so which one do you not touch twice? If you draw a straight line up and down, and it touches something twice. So we've drawn these points here. And it's crossing this point at 2, 2. And it crossed this point at 2, 1. Because the vertical line, one vertical line, touches it twice, that makes it not a function. One vertical line can only touch it once. You can draw an infinite amount of vertical lines, but each one can only touch it the function once. If it touches it twice, then it's not a function. Okay? So this is with just points. I'll show you with some continuous functions how that works. Okay. So. Oh, I forgot this doesn't go sideways. Okay, so let's say we have a function that looks like this. Continuously going this way, okay? If I use the vertical line test, at this point here, yeah, it looks like it only touches it once. But as I get down this function or this equation, how many times am I touching this? Twice. Twice. So is this representing function? No. No, this cannot be a function because when I draw a straight line up and down, it touches it more than once. It could touch it three, four, five different times. Who knows what the graph is they have? But if it touches it more than once, then it's not a function. So the whole thing is not a function. The whole thing is not a function. So the equation that represents this graph is y is equal to the square root of x. You don't have to worry about that. I didn't expect you to know how to graph that because I know you haven't seen it before. But that's what this represents, okay? Anytime we draw a vertical line through this, I'm touching it twice, okay? So because it's touching twice, this does not represent a function, this here. Now, there's going to become a point later on in the year where we'll talk about how to make this a function. But for now, when, we, when you see this graph, if you draw a vertical line, it's not a function. So we'll do a couple other examples of things that aren't functions. Okay, I have another object. This is a circle. Uh, you may have touched on this depending on what class you were in last year. This is the equation for it. Don't worry about it. That just represents this here. I don't know why I put I those that. backwards. Let's uh, let me move those. I like it. Like you would add a question, something like this. This represents drawing a circle on a graph. 
Don't worry about draw, how to draw it right now. What we're trying to figure out is, is this a function? So if I draw a vertical line, it is not a function because it touches different points twice. Now, there are points like right here. I can't quite draw it perfect. Where technically it only touches it once, but that's fine. It may touch it only once at several different points. It also does that here. But if there is any point where it touches it twice, it instantly does, makes it not a function. So the same idea would be something like this. If I had a line, that's perfectly vertical, okay? And then another one. So if you look across this, I'm drawing here. These all seem to say it's a function. All these points seem to say it's a function. But at this one specific point, I technically touch it many times. Uh, at 4, at 3, at 4.5, all those different points. So this one thing here makes this graph not a function. Okay? Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is the different ways they can represent points on a graph. So you guys are used to seeing a table, okay? So you may have a table like this where this column represents all the different x values and these spots beside it represent the y values that correspond. Okay, so another way they might describe something in your book, as we're going to talk about this also, is called domain and range. Okay? Oh yeah, we did this. Domain and range talk about x values and y values. So we have our domain and our range. Now domain represents x values only. Okay? And range represents y values. When they give you something like this, so they give you a d colon and they'll have this funny looking bracket. They'll say something like two, three, and four, let's say. And maybe they tell you the range is four, three, and four, let's say. Okay? It's assumed that these points correspond to each other. Domain are our x values, and range are our y values. So I can rewrite this in a table. I'm going to write down my domains in my x. So I have a x value of 2, I have an x value of 3, and I have an x value of 4. That's all they've given me so far. Okay, I know I made my chart a little bit. Then these are the corresponding y values. So for 2, and my x was 2, y was 4. So I plug it into the chart. Wait, how do you find them? These, they'll be written right above each other. So we set up almost like a column, okay? You ever have to find about yourself? No? Okay, so three was three, and finally the last four was number four. So you've seen things set up in a table before. You guys have graphed this. These are coordinates. Okay? The only thing is they may represent them like this. Domain is two, three, and four. Range is four, three, and four. Range only deals with y values, domain only x values. So if I were to actually plot these points on a graph. Okay, so after seeing those, that domain and range, we have our coordinates. Our first coordinate, and we'll just write them beside, is 2 and 4. The next coordinate is 3 and 3. And the last coordinate is 4 and 4. Okay, so I can plot those points, 2 and 4. 3 and 3, and 4 and 4. So this is just three points on a graph. If they were to ask me if this is a function, would this be a function? Yeah. Okay. So our vert it passes the vertical line test. So it's a function. And these are the three points. Now what they might ask you to do at one point is the reverse. And in the reverse of this would be they may give you several points. So something like... Two. Two. Four. So they've given us several points. We actually have to figure out where they are. So if we look on the graph, we have x is negative 9, y is positive 2. So that would be the first point. Uh, negative 9, positive 2. If we look at a second point, we have x is negative 8, 
y is 3, negative 8 and 3, negative 6 and positive 2, and finally negative 4 and positive 3. So they may ask you to put this in domain and range. So they've given you points and they want you to set it up in domain and range. You can make a table if you like, if that helps you as an intermediate part, or you can go straight to domain and range. I know that all of the first values are going to be my x values of this function. So when I go to put the domain down, my domain, that's a b, not a d. There you go. Our domain is negative 9, which is right here, negative 8, negative 6, and negative 4. That's the domain. That's all there is to it. They've given us those points. What would our range be? 2 and 3. I don't actually have to repeat 2 and 3, 2 and 3, because they are still the same point. So I only have to put 2 and 3. Now, would this represent a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? Yeah. Yeah, passes the vertical line test, so we're okay. This is a function. This is the domain, and this is the range of that function. So say you were to represent this, they wanted it the way I've been showing you earlier, where they had the ovals. So these are all our x, our inputs. And these are all of our outputs, our y. Our domains were negative 9, negative 8, negative 6, and negative 4. Our range was only the numbers 2 and 3. I would draw specific arrows. We know negative 9 corresponds to 2. Negative 8 corresponds to 3. Negative 6 corresponds to 2. And negative 4 corresponds to 3. So I know that looks confusing with the arrows. That's why actually picking out the coordinates like this, or even writing it like domain and range can sometimes be a little clearer. The ovals I know are confusing, but the book writes them that way, so I need you guys to get used to that. So, the last thing we're going to talk about is finding domain and range of a continuous function. So on the page before, we were doing domain and range of specific points, okay? So we would just represent it like that. D, semicolon, 2, 3, and 4. We would just write the numbers in, just like we did when we had the green points here. But that's if we're talking about specific points only. There's a difference if we have continuous functions like this. This is a straight line, y-intercept 4, slope 2, so it goes like that. Because I passed my grade line math, that's how I know. All right, so this is a continuous function, and these has arrows at both ends. So what that means is it's going to go on forever. If I had to represent the domain, I would use something a little different. We would start, we would still start with D semicolon or in brackets. But because this is continuous, and what that means is it touches every point from the beginning all the way to the end. So let's uh, So this is just gonna keep going forever. Even though our graph doesn't go forever, because there's arrows at the end, that means this function goes forever. So it's infinite on both ends. So the way to represent something like that, instead of having to write every single number known to man, is we go x is the element of all real numbers. Or just write an x, like an e, and an r. What that means is the x value is infinite. It touches everything. That's what the domain of this value would be. No, because then you have to write x equals positive infinite and negative infinite. It's easier if you just put these three letters. Okay? So this represents something that's continuous and goes on forever. Steven. Okay. Now, same idea with the range. Because this is a line and it goes up and down forever, the exact same thing is going to happen with our range. Our range is going to be R. Sorry. And then we have Y is the element of all real numbers. And that's for the first one. Okay. That's for our line. Now, the second thing I have here is I have a parabola. Let's transform two down. So it looks like this. Okay. Now, we'll deal with the domain of this one to start also. Domain of this, because there's arrows on both ends, even though it looks like it's going up, I can keep going wider and wider forever. 
So this is still going to be infinite, going both ways. So x is still going to be the element of all real numbers. The only difference now is our y value in our range. We have a cutoff point. Above negative 2, it exists. Okay? So above the negative 2, this is a continuous function. So we're going to start with y is the element of all real numbers. But the problem is below negative 2, this doesn't exist. So we have to say that in our domain. The way I would say that is with a straight line to show that there's a restriction. And I have to say that y is greater than and equal to negative 2. Oh, we didn't... Okay? So that restriction saying that this means that y is every single number when it's above and equal to negative 2. It means that it doesn't exist below the number 2. We never had to put in y equals 0. Is that an easy? It's an easy. Let's record this. If we have a parabola touching the same point, the vertex, instead going downwards, we'll do it in red, the range of that function would be y is element of all real numbers. But this time it's... Oh, it's greater than... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Y is less than and equal to negative 2. Okay? The line underneath means equal to also. So that means it's touching that point. 